Timothy chapter 1, I read from verse 14 to 17. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 1, from verse 14 to verse 17. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant, with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Verse 17. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, to him be glory both now and forevermore. Brethren, God Almighty has been so faithful unto us individually. God Almighty has been so faithful to us as a family. God Almighty has been so faithful to us as a church. And I want to say this beyond any reasonable doubt, that God Almighty has been faithful to us as a nation. You see, there are laws of nations of the world that, in fact, the rate at which this coronavirus pandemic has claimed many lives is so alarming. And it, may I say it has gone to a level that it really embarrasses people. What we wonder that what is going on all over the world. And recently, I heard about a particular country which I will not mention that uh, the dust, the daily increase of that terrible uh, disease, uh, coronavirus, and very close to 80,000. 80,000 is something, but in this, our nation, island. God Almighty has been faithful to us. And I want to say this, even in this particular uh, community, this church, by the special grace of God, there will be no reason for any one of us uh, to be running enter character as a result of this uh, coronavirus pandemic. We owe God a great thank you, a big thank you. And this one leads us to the title of the message today, Appreciating God's Mercy. Appreciating God's Mercy. From the Bible passage that has been read to us, I love this about this, my brother, this, my elder. I, in fact, I am... Trusting God that one day I will see him, even apart from seeing Jesus, I want to see how Apostle Paul looks. Because he is such a person that is so passionate about God. Everything about him. He doesn't, he appreciates grace, appreciates God's mercy. When we talk about evangelism, it's always there. When you talk about prayer, everything about God, he does not take it lightly. So, in this Bible passage, he realized the fact that all that he did in the past, that he did it in ignorance, and not only that, when he now realized it, he started to show his appreciation unto God. And he finished the statement by saying, unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, to him be glory, both now and forevermore. And people like that, there is no way that grace and mercy will be far away from them. So, I want to say a few things about the salient uh, things to know about mercy. Salient things to know about mercy. Mercy. When we talk about mercy, there are salient things we need to know about it. Number one, it is God's prerogative. When we talk about mercy, it is God's 
own prerogative. How do I mean? Nobody can question him when he decides to show mercy on an individual, when he decides to show mercy on a family, when he decides to show mercy on a community or a nation. And nobody can query him. It is all in all because he is a suffering God. According to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 9, verses 14 to 16. Romans chapter 9, from verse 14 to verse 16. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? And he replied, okay, God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Verse 16. So then, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. So mercy is God's own prerogative. It does as, as it pleases him. So that is the first thing we must know about mercy. And number two, the salient thing that we must know, number two is, it brings out a person from valley even to the mountain top. Anybody that enjoys God's mercy, God Almighty will just bring the individual or the family or the nation from the valley and will place the person or the people on the mountain top. The message of God brings somebody from obscurity even to the limelight. And I want to say this, all of us seated here and people of God that are watching and listening to us on Facebook or Instagram, I want us to know that it is God's mercy, it is God's mercy that we are enjoying. If God should take away his mercy, we are done for. It brings people from valley to the mountain top. And we can see that account in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 1 and verses 8 to 12. 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 1, then verses 8 to 12. That was an account of King David. David was just a young boy, a bush boy, that was abandoned in the jungle. And because the searchlight of God Almighty was focused on that boy, some people living in the city, that is his brothers, good looking, stout, and very okay in the physical. But what happened? God wanted to show forth his glory. Wanted to pour oral of honor and glory upon an individual. And guess what? The man of God was sent somewhere to go and do that. And when the man got to their father, Jesus, and start to ask from the elders. They started to come out one after the other. We're just coming out. Just coming out. All of them were rejected. But the one whose God's searchlight has been focused was left in the bush. And now the question now came. Uh, do you have any other shy somewhere? And lo and behold, the father now said, Hmm, yes, I have one is keeping the animal mind in the in the field or in the farm or in the jungle, whatsoever. 
Say, okay, we are going to wait for him. Oh my goodness. I declare today in the name of Jesus, the glory of God upon your life, upon your family, upon everything that pertains to you. It does not matter how delayed it may be. Oh, there wouldn't be any rest for anyone holding it. Amen. It must come put to pass. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And it was recorded. We are not going to stand. I mean, we are not going to sit down until this person is brought to this place. And they waited. Immediately, and when the young boy was brought out from the bush, Immediately he appeared. Oh Lord, I love this. What a great standing ovation. And he said, yes. Immediately he appeared. He said, the anointed of God is here. When God, when God decides to show forth his glory, life of a person, there is nothing any human being can do about it. It brings from grass to grace, mercy of God. No wonder why the Bible even refers to it in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 34. Acts chapter 13, verse 34. She spoke about Davidic mercy, the mercy of David. Great one. And the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, I mean 55, verse 3. Isaiah 55, verse 3. Suppose that as well. Davidic mercy. Mercy of David. Part number 3. Salient things to know about God's mercy. It averts destructions. A person, if the devil has already proposed that this one will be destroyed, when the mercy of God is upon that individual, God will just say, no way, <laughs> this one is no go area for the enemy. Lamentation chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Lamentation, the third chapter. Verses 22 and 23. The Bible tells us it is of the Lord's mercy we are not consumed. In other words, it is of the Lord's mercy we are not destroyed. Because his compassion does not fail. They are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness. Disruptions will be averted. Will be diverted. Away from a person whose life is full of God's mercy. And do you know that you are one of them? Yeah. How, how did I know this? Even that we are here today, we are still much alive. We are one of them. Yeah. The people we're talking about, they are not far, they are not. Don't ever think, oh, they are special people out there. You, you, you in particular. And me in particular. All of us, we are one of them. It is of God's mercy that we are not consumed. Psalms 103, verse 4. Psalms 103, verse 4. The Bible says, who redeemed their life from what? Destruction and crowned thee with loving kindness and what tender mercies. Point number four the mercy of God brings healing, great healing. According to the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses. 46 to 40, 52. Mark the 10th chapter from verse 46 to 52. The story of a man 
that was blind. Blind Bartimaeus. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ was coming out of Jericho. And there was this man that was there. It's only God that knows how long that man was there for. The moment he heard that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was the one going, was one passing, he cried. Jesus, he didn't say, Jesus, thou son of God. He said, Jesus, thou son of David. Remember, Davidic mercy. The assured mercy of David. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And let me say this, there are two prayers that can never miss its target. Number one, prayer of mercy. And prayer of thanksgiving. You thank God. And you cry for God's mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. I heard this story about a young shark loaded with, with the word of God. Great with uncommon anointing. Was a great teacher. And because of that special grace, the pastor gave him the opportunity even to teach people, give seminars, and the host of others. And guess what happened? And he was addressing the married couples and said, Well, when your wife is pregnant and is about to put to bed, all you just need to do, bind the bindables and lose the loosables and command the child to come out. As if it's something that could happen expressly like that. Oh, you were? It was now. It was now his own time. He got married. Glory be to God. Wife was pregnant. Was about to put to bed. Yes, I remember what I thought those people in those days. Now, I command. That may negate it, I punch you. This thing, I lose you. Baby, come! And nothing happened. And the poor woman was in a great agony. Ah! Maybe be the garden or little bush in the back of his place. And cry unto God, Lord, show me mercy. And before now came back, the miracle had taken place. Prayer of mercy. Prayer of mercy. It's a prayer that everyone that has made mistakes and committed sins should do. Should make all the time. will be saying, what you've done is bad. Let me say this. Particular year, I was invited to a particular city in Africa for ministration. And the driver that was taking me down had all the papers uh, because the windows were tinted. Loads of checkpoints on the road. And we got to a place. The officers asked for the particulars. Everything was complete. I said, what about the tinted glasses? 
Because in that particular country, when they, they normally use that to kidnap people or to destroy one thing or the other, so that they will not see who is inside. And he started to argue. I said, my brother, you don't need to argue. Argument will not solve it. You've made a blunder. I mean, we've made a blunder. And the blunder that we have made, we do not have the certificate for us to have a tinted window. Do we have it? He said, to I have officer. What of officer are we talking about? I now call the, of, uh, the officer. And now, sir, we are pleading for leniency. I know we don't have it. Please. And do you know detention? What happens? Went down. No wonder. Why the Bible tells us such words breaks bones. It is our pride that brings argument. This thing is not just, oh, I'm sorry. The prayer and that man, Bartimaeus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Even though when the followers, the disciples of Jesus Christ, were trying to shut him down, oh, God Almighty will not close his ear to the prayer of people like that. And the Bible tells us Jesus Christ stood still. Said, Command those people that have said, Stay, shut up your mouth. Jesus Christ, not for you. He commanded them, Bring him to me. What? And the next step, what do you want me to do for you? I just needed my sight. I want my eyes of understanding. I put it that way, to be opened. But during his own time, he said he wanted his eyes to be opened. Do you know if he had asked for money, maybe he would have gotten that and the, the blindness will remain. It means that when we want to ask anything from God, we must not ask for cookies. Ask for something that has eternal value. It's like somebody who wants to ask for, we just say, uh, choose between 10 billion billions, uh, pounds and ability to raise the dead. Do you know people that are ignoramus? We just say, ah, with 10 billion pounds, ah, we do much. And they are man, the, the film is shaking. <laughs> and not knowing that the grace, what cannot be quantified monetarily, is more precious than all that. He got what he wanted. And the prayer of thanksgiving and thanking God can miss his target. Example in the book of John chapter 5, verses 5 to 9. John chapter 5, verses 5 to 9. There was a man that was fit for good 38 years, 38 years out of a person's life to be in that problem. Jesus Christ came, wanted to help him, was trying to give excuses. I didn't have anybody to help me. Ah, the Alpha and Omega was there with you. The helper of destiny, the rewriter of history, the one that can recover all that you have lost, is with you. You are complaining. And Jesus Christ overlooked all that. Mercy prevailed. Point number five. Do you know that mercy does not go alone? He, it has some companions, emissaries, that go together. Psalm 23, verse 6. Psalms chapter 23, 
Verse 6. What does the Bible say? Psalms 23. Verse 6. You know, I surely all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Can you see that? Does not walk alone. Mercy. Ah! How many of us want goodness and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives? Do you know one of major prayers I do pray is Lord, let your mercy make me great. Let your gentleness make me great. Your mercy. Mercy. Davidic mercy. Mercy of God. Doesn't walk alone. Have, goes with goodness. Goodness. And number six. The last point for today. And this one Somehow, somehow, it might not be as sweet as others could be. As merciful, as gracious, as compassionate that our God is. Do you know, it's rich in mercy. We want to talk about mercy. God Almighty so rich. I mean, not even rich, worthy. Mercy is not appreciated, it could be withdrawn. It is not human being that will withdraw it. It is God Himself. God Himself is a mercy. You know, every day of our lives say, Oh Lord, have mercy on me, have mercy. And I've heard from people, it is just God's mercy, it is just God's grace. And we keep saying it like that and taking God for granted. Mercy could be withdrawn by God himself. We do say that God is not a man. That it is a man that will just say, oh, everything is to punish him. Everything is to castigate. Everything is to rebuke. Everything is to to eat. But God is full of mercy. The same God, according to his word, that is rich in his wealth in mercy, says, I can withdraw it if it is not appreciated. You know how it happens to we human beings. When somebody keeps doing you good, and you take it half for granted. Or taking the person for granted. It will get to a time. The person will be fed up. Do you know that God Almighty can be fed up of that? God Himself. First Samuel chapter 15, from verse 17 to 23. First Samuel chapter 15, from verse 17 to 23. That was. The story of Saul. Uh, God gave him in some instruction. This is what you must do. Obey my word so that it will be well with you. Don't do it. And he went his own way and did something as he will. That the person doesn't want to do. But the repercussion will be waiting. At the moment, God will start to say, if we read from verse 17 to 23, when God will start to say, when you are born, when you are born, when you are born, to that, if we read it, someone said to Saul, 
No, where you were nothing. God Almighty brought you up and just had to I mean, enthrone you to become a king. Now, you are fool. You think you are okay by yourself. You don't want to take to my instructions anymore. No worries. And the word of God came expressly. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 15. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 15. What does the Bible say? The Bible tells us. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. Talking about David. Who knew that he was nobody. And the mercy of God located him. Even though he made a blunder. But he did not go back to that blunder anymore. A day we come. When, as God Almighty will have it, I will explain through the help of the Holy Spirit. There are lots of people that did evil in the Bible. They never went back to it again. But what we have today, some uh, people will be cutting the scriptures. This is God's gospel. Didn't you know about this? Even a prostitute, Rahab, didn't go back to prostitution when God Almighty said to use are for his glory. Even the one that was loaded with legions, Mary Magdalene, and said, look, for David, I will not take away my mercy from him, as I took it from who? Who I put away before thee. It means that God Almighty withdrew his mercy. I pray let it be one of our major prayer points that Lord don't let me take your mercy for granted and please don't withdraw your mercy from me and do you know the danger of it when the Bible tells us that Christ in me is the hope of glory our father in the Lord the general here gave a message on Christ could be for Christ could be against, Christ could be around, Christ could be over, and he mentions something that, hey, I don't know, Lord, don't let that be my portion. He said, Christ could be neutral. Concerning a person, you know, when we say somebody is neutral, remember, our enemy, every second, is waiting for our downfall. When they would just say, yes, we got him. All this why this man has been saying, he wants to live holy, he wants to live for God, who will set up, who will attack, who will do. And when carelessness comes in, little by little, before you know it, so that mercy could be withdrawn. And the prayer of the devil, every day, do you know it? Oh Lord, you are the Almighty God. Leave me and this person alone inside the battle ring. Don't help him and don't help me too. And remember, I don't know of anybody who said that, yes, devil, come here. Do not take up to a second when the person will be brought down by the devil. I pray for all of us, including myself, that concerning anything that pertains to our life, may God not withdraw his mercy. Amen. May God not stand against us. Amen. May God not stand neutral Amen. concerning our lives. Amen. In conclusion, Appreciating God's mercy. As we know, this is first Sunday of the month to thank God. People that appreciate God's mercy, they come with the heart of thanksgiving. They dance from the citadel of their being and they give to God Something worthy unto him. Where is it written in the Bible? 
First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 29. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 29. Say, give unto the Lord the glory that is due to who? To his name. Bring an offering and come before him with what? Worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. And Psalm 96. Verses 8 and 9. Psalms 96 verses 8 and 9. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring and of that is just the essence. And we give us just one or two minutes between you and God. Thinking of the great and marvelous things that God Almighty has done for us that even money cannot buy it. Between you and God. That Lord, I need you. I just, I don't want you to take your mercy away from me. Today, I'm giving my life to you. That is the first thing we can give our soul, our heart, our heart. Give your life, your body as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Holy. And this is your reasonable service. And package whatsoever you want to give unto God. To say, Lord, I just want to say thank you today. And we bow our heads out for prayer. He give us one or two minutes just to appreciate it and say, Lord, I appreciate your mercy in my life. Just appreciate your it is God's mercy. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Appreciate God's mercy. Appreciate His grace. Appreciate Him. Close your eyes and thank Him. Say, Lord, I thank you. I am who I am today. Just by your mercy.